How does scored analysis work in Power BI? That's what we are going to explore in round six of Power BI practice. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if you're new to this channel and looking for ways to improve your Power BI skills, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. We have challenges for you on a weekly basis. And today it's time for the solution of the sixth round, which is about chord analysis. What does chord analysis do? Well, basically it just means that instead of looking at your top line numbers, you're gonna break apart a dimension in different chords or groups that share common characteristics. In this challenge, we're also gonna create chords for our customer dimension on the basis of when they first did their purchase. But first, let's have a look at the top line sales value. So we have a sales table to which I'm gonna add a new measure for the total sales. So let's name it total sales, which is just a simple sum of our sales column. Now let's create an area chart on which we drag our total sales measure and we're going to break it down by our date hierarchy. So let's add that also to our area chart and you see the breakdown over time. Now I would like to see it on a quarterly basis. So I'm going to expand to, and down to the next level and then let's just clean up the X axis a little bit. So I'm going to go to format X axis, make sure it is categorical. I'm going to turn off concatenate labels. Now you see that when we look at our top line sales values over time, it looks pretty good. However, let's now also add the sales for new customers. Okay, so we can do this with a quick measure. So I'm gonna to go to my sales table, I'm gonna add a new quick measure. Now the calculation type that I want, that is gonna be over here, the sales from new customers. Now the sales amount is coming from the sales table, total sales, let's add it. And then the customer ID comes from the dim customer table. I'm just going to use the customer name. And then for our dates, we're going to get that from our date table. And let's add that as well. I'm going to click here on OK. And you see that Power BI adds over here a new measure, total sales for new customers, and which I then can add to my area chart. Now you see here that while the total sales is going up, the total sales for new customers is drastically going down. So let's dive a little bit deeper by creating cohorts for our customers on the basis of when they placed their first purchase. Now the end result needs to look like this, a 100% stacked column chart where we use the first order field on the legend. And when we want to break down by a certain dimension, then we need to have a calculated column and not a measure. So let's go to our customer table. Now here we have our customer table and what we want to do is for each customer, we want to go to the sales table and check when this customer placed their first order. Okay, so let's for example, take the first customer, Beth Fritzler. Okay, so let's switch now to the sales table and place a filter on the customer name. Now here we have Beth Fritzler. So you see this gives me 16 rows uh, for each item that this customer bought. And then we can also sort the order date in descending order. And then here you see that the first order that was placed was on the 10th of November, 2015, okay? And that is the value that I want to return in my calculated column right next to Beth Ritzler, okay? So let's add a new column. I'm gonna name this column year of first order. So, and what we want to do first is retrieve all of the rows for that customer, okay? So we can do that with the function called related table, okay? So we wanna retrieve it from the sales table. And we cannot just leave it like this, huh? because if we leave it like this, it would give me all of the rows for Beth Fritzler, huh? just like we have seen before when we place the filter on the sales table, okay? And what we wanna do next is iterate over this table, uh, row by row. And we can do this with the iterator functions like sum x, max x, average x. Now, every time we wanna retrieve the date of the order, and then in the end, check which one was the minimum, which one was the first order for that customer, okay? So I need the function min x. Okay, so let's type in here min x. Now with the min x function, we're gonna iterate over all of the rows that are coming from the sales table 
And we're gonna do that for each customer. So for Bath Fritza, that would mean we get those 16 rows from the sales table, iterate over those rows. And then each time we want to have an evaluation for what the, the order date is. So I'm gonna type here sales order date. And then in the end, it will check, okay, what was the minimum order date? All right, now let's see what it returns. And you see, indeed, we have here the 10th of November, 2015, but we don't want to have the date, but the year. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap this inside of a year function. So that I end up with the year of the first order. So now that we have this, we can create a 100% stacked column chart and use the year of first order on the legend. So I'm gonna insert my 100% stacked column chart. I'm gonna add total sales and let's break it down by year. Okay, so over here, grab year and put it on the axis. And we want to have in our legend the year of the first order. Okay, so let's take that calculated column and place it on the legend. Now to make this a little bit clearer, let's also add some data labels to it and the format. Here, this chart shows you that in 2015, 100% of our sales came from 2015 because that's when our business started. But then for 2016, two thirds were still coming from customers that we acquired in 2015, that placed a new order in 2016. And only one third came from new customers, okay? Then in 2017, this percentage of customers that were new, that, 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 we, that didn't place an order in one of the previous years, was only 8.7%, okay? So you see how this business is struggling with getting new customers. And this is insight that you don't get from just looking at the top line sales values, but only when you create cohorts. Now let's take this one step further and create a stacked column chart that shows me the distribution um, broken down by the total number of orders that a customer made so that we kind of create buckets on the X axis on the basis of total number of orders. So this is the chart that we're gonna create and the calculation that we need to do first is how many orders each customer plays. Now what is important to know before we create the measure is that the level of detail that we have in a sales table is on the basis of order item. Okay, so that means we can have for one order multiple rows. So now that we know that, let's create a new measure. Let's call this one total number of orders. And we cannot do over here a simple count on the basis of the order ID eh, because each order might have multiple uh, rows. So we need to have a distinct count on the basis of the sales order ID column. Let's now create a stacked column chart. And here I want to count the unique number of customers that I have. Okay, so I'm gonna take the customer name, add it to values, and let's switch over here to a distinct count. And on the legend, we can then use again the year of first order. And now on the axis, we want to create buckets huh, for the total number of orders. Okay, so let's see if we can add this measure that we just created, total number of orders to the axis. We see that doesn't work. Okay, so every time we need something on the legend or on the axis, we need to create a calculated column. So let's do this for our customer table. So I'm gonna add a new column. We can call this uh, column total number of orders, just like we had for a measure. And here we can just refer to the name of our measure, total number of orders. And you see that we now have a column with the total number of orders for each customer. Let's double check this for the first one. Beth Fritzler again, I'm gonna switch to my sales table. And you see that for Beth Fritzler, we have 16 rows. However, when we select the order ID column, then here we have 10 filtered distinct values. Okay, so that seems to be working. Now let's go back to the formula for our calculated column. Now instead of referring to the measure, that total number of orders, uh, we can also do over here a distinct count directly without uh, having to create that measure in the first place. Okay, so I can do a distinct count and we want to do it on the order ID column in the sales table. And you see now it returns me the total number of orders for all of our customers. But it's exactly the same formula as what my measure had, okay? 
So why is it different? Now the reason is that when you refer to your measure, then it respects the filter context uh, for each row. So meaning it calculates the total number of orders, but uh, for the first customer, Pat Fritzler, then for Sam Craven, etc. Now, when you write distinct count sales order ID for a calculated column, well, there's at the moment no filter context. Okay, so it doesn't filter this amount for that customer. Now, what you need to do is wrap this inside of a calculate function. And this forces context transition. So instead of having row context, you transition it now to filter context. And you see that uh, it filters on the basis of whatever is on this row. Okay, so it takes all of these values as the filter to calculate the total number of orders. And now it gives me the same result as what we had before. Okay, so you either do it like this and you don't need the measure or you create a measure and then refer to that measure inside of your calculated column. So now that we have this calculated column for the total number of orders, we can add that one to the axis. And let's also turn the data labels on. And then for the X axis, instead of type continuous, I will switch to categorical. Okay. Now then you have to make sure that you also sort it in ascending order and that it sorts by the total number of orders. And now you can see the distribution for how many customers place a certain amount of orders and then also when they place these orders and because we created these cohorts. Now doing cohort analysis inside of Power BI basically just comes down to creating calculated columns with DAX formulas that you then can use on your visuals to create a breakdown. Now let me know if you have any questions about doing cohort analysis or maybe you have some extra insights then please share them with us in the comment section below. That's it for round six. And if you want to stay up to date on all of our challenges and want to be informed when our next challenge gets uploaded, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. And I hope to see you in the next one.